Raising animals is not a nine to five activity. In addition to hard work, it requires an understanding of what animals need and what consumers are concerned about. Here's a segment from Prairie Public's documentary series, Built on Agriculture. Most people that are engaged in actual primary production raising animals, the vast 99.9% .9 of them do think that they are respectful and that they are stewards and that they are doing something very important and that they do care about the animals. We do teach about welfare and what the animals needs because our understanding of that has changed over time. But fundamentally, I think the underlying principle um, upon which really a livestock production farming is based is that aspect of stewardship. It's of actually caring for these animals. Um, as some people would say, why else would I do it? It's, it's not a nine to fiver. It is something that, that requires a lot of work and effort, a lot of focus in, in that responsibility. And yes, there are some bad actors uh, out there, but that is not the majority. So for us in our teaching, uh, not only do we try to teach about welfare and our knowledge and our understanding currently, about what animals need and what's important to them, and also all the production aspects, but we also encourage an understanding and, and the questioning of oneself, right? Okay, is what you're doing, are you in fact paying attention to what the animal, to the individual animal and what they need? Uh, but also an understanding of what the consumer is concerned about. And how do you deal with that concern? You can't ignore it. You know, that's your, your market basically as well. You can't ignore it. How do you deal with it? My name is Marg Rimple and I live southeast of a little community called St. Anne, Manitoba. We're a mixed farm. We're, we're growing a lot of feed grains for our hog enterprise and we're also growing some cash crops. I'm closer to retirement than I am to the beginning of, of my farming career and I get really enthused and, and very energized and excited seeing the next crop, the next generation of farmers coming onto the scene. And I think back 35 years ago, we also had that much um, energy and drive and enthusiasm to experiment and do new things. It's really great to see that continue. Right? We have a tendency to think all the really good ideas and good visions and good dreams are, are going to die with us. And it's really good to be reminded that that's not the case, that there is a significant next generation that's very enthused about food production. Um, my husband passed away nine years ago, so I'm, I operate as a widow. My oldest son has uh, returned to the farm after a bit of time away and is certainly interested in making his future on the farm. There are a number of ways to transfer farms. It comes down to each generation sort of having to, to buy the farm again, which is a significant challenge. From when you begin your farming career in your, you know, in your early 20s, you're already doing estate planning because the retiring generation has to have enough from the farm to, to sustain them through their senior years. So it's a huge challenge and, and it is for every generation. But we can't always count on the financial rewards to carry us through. So sometimes we need the passion, we just need the plain, plain grit <laughs> to, to get us through some of the, the more difficult times. You ask us as farmers, is your farm a business? And we say, yes, it is. But it is also a lot more than that too, right? It is also where we live. It binds up our family and has so many threads woven together that it is a business, but it's not necessarily a, a cut and dry, easy to separate business. The spiritual dimension, almost, of, of living on the land and from the land 
certainly by the time we, we get to older age, that's just really part of us. So in terms of leaving it, I think I can leave it externally, but internally, no, it's probably always there. Once a farmer, always a farmer. Yeah, probably. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.